Our first obsession with the Pacific Northwest was climbing its highest peaks. Now we're back, but not for the mountains. We came back for the waterfalls. Oregon and Washington is just a luscious green and blue playground for us. Being able to jump off these waterfalls in these amazing natural places is such a treat because the impacts are like nothing. There's waterfalls everywhere, deep, jumpable waterfalls everywhere that have yet to be conquered. Oregon? This place sucks. <laughs> Just kidding, no. Oregon is by far one of the most unique places that I've ever seen. It's just absolutely breathtaking to look around anywhere in Oregon. Just beautiful places for us to progress and show everybody our skills. And do it. Oh yeah! It <laughs> All right, so we're out here at Tokyo Falls today, and uh, we got a nice Sandy crew going, and I think we're gonna see some serious action. Since over the big winter, a big tree fell down over the river and made it more accessible to uh, get across. We figured out that we could jump off that tree, so no I think it's a good idea that we... You can jump off the tree? Yeah, dude. No Apparently. fucking way! Yeah. Here, let's jump off the tree! So there's two options. You can jump off the tree and swim downstream, or you can cross the tree and repel. my first rappel ever and it's a pretty gnarly one so I'm a little nervous. Once you get going, that's the point of no return because you can't come back up from there, so.
When you get the courage, somebody's like, dude, you know what, you got it. And I'm like, you know what, I've done this 100,000 times, I'll be fine. And once I, soon as I hit that step off and I step off the cliff, that feeling of fear just goes away and your body takes over and it puts you in this state of mind uh, called the flow state. Flow state to me is a mindset where fear completely turns off and you know, your human, your true human reaction just shines through. You become almost superhuman in, in the way that you can slow down time. Your brain is, is just shutting off and relying on instinct and it just goes quiet and I'm just completely focused but I'm not actually thinking. That adrenaline rush goes from a heavy heartbeat to you just get this calmness and you have to jump right then. Everyone has heard the term fight or flight. You know that's when your adrenaline just skyrockets and you just your body just takes over, your subconscious part of your brain just takes over and tells your body what to do. Everything turns off and I know in my heart that the second that my feet leave the cliff, my body knows exactly what to do and I have nothing at all to worry about. Brandon Beck is the nuttiest guy there is. Sends it first out of all of us almost every time. He gets there and he's like, all right, I'm gonna send it, I'm ready to go. I'll be the first one, I don't care, I'm going. I don't care if anyone's filming me, here I go, you know. Brandon is just a pioneer. He just does everything first, no matter what it is. He's not doing it for videos, he's not doing it for Instagram followers, he's doing it just because He's a crazy guy. Brandon Beck, the ultimate man. The passion that Brandon has for cliff jumping is amazing. Nick has this really interesting, unique style to his back foot that I've literally never seen anywhere else. I don't even know how he bends like that. I'm gonna have to figure out what yoga classes he's taking because his back is just like, just completely cranked and he looks like the most actual scorpion that I've ever seen. Nobody sends a backflip like Coulter. Oh, Nick Coulter. <laughs> so Nick Coulter has the gnarliest, biggest backflips I've ever seen in my life. That to me is so crazy because I can't even turn around on a cliff that big and think about doing it. So it's insane. No one is touching the backflip game there. King of the backflip. I actually call him the Scorpion King. Travis Sims has more energy than anyone I've ever met. Seventh year, coming home to a place there we go. Never been His form is absolutely perfect. He just zips right through the water. The Colorado Rocky Mountain High. I've seen it rain and fire in the sky. Talk to Rocky Mountain High, Colorado. Rocky Mountain High.
Briggsy, Briggsy, Briggsy. The Gainer Gorg. Even though you know what's coming, you know what's coming, it's still the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. We always give him shit for just only knowing how to gain her, but he has that down to a science. Nobody sends those gainers as beautiful as Jay. It's it's amazing. Just just take a look and watch. Watch, watch this one right here. Reinhard Reed, probably the craziest one of them all. He throws the most gnarliest tricks on another human level. So Reinhard came up to me and was like, hey, you want a tandem triple back? And when Reinhard asks you to do a tandem, you can't say no, you just gotta go for it. Tahoe has its own scene. It's definitely ski or snowboard oriented. You're grabbing your feet, you're tweaking grabs. Really cool to kind of see the cross between dual sports, like say skiing with us and, and how we take all of our ski tricks to the cliff. grabbing our feet, looking at stuff a little bit differently. I'm Zach Steele, I'm from Lake Tahoe, California. I love sending it. <laughs> <laughs> When we first started cliff jumping, you know, it was front flips, back flips, gainers, and then they come out and they're throwing corks and misties and grabs. When they're done jumping a cliff, you're like, what did I just see? What, how many flips, how many spins was that? They just all throw these super unique tricks that are literally just unique to skiers. Me as like a professional, or like, you know, like an Olympic style, whatever diver, and all of that is like weird to me, it's crazy. It's so cool and I wish I could do stuff like that. Yeah! <laughs>
Yes! So Look good at to you. see you! Look at you! Look at you! Oh, I didn't know you were oh. doing that. Oh. Got weak hips. Okay, all right, all right. Got weak hips. We touch tips. Guys, we touch tips. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's so good. So a few weeks ago a huge crew of us came here to try and jump Tokety Falls and it was just raging super hard. If anybody wants to jump today, safety needs to be set up. 100%. We got there expecting a nice easy flow and you know it ended up just being absolutely turbulent. I, I was really feeling it. However, the water was just out of control. It was just absolute madness. I would have had to jump probably anywhere from 20 to 30 feet out to clear to the gap uh, of the spot that I wanted to hit. So I decided to back down. To clear the gap, the only option was to go higher. <laughs> like, I just don't want to be the dude who fucking is 20 feet under and takes that gas, but... Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, what I mean, I'm honestly there's worried no, about. There's... I kind of feel it, but I haven't had any practice for, like, since last summer, so it's pretty scary. I'm trying to be warm when I hit that water so my body doesn't want to gasp as much. Yeah. Damn. Oh my god. <laughs> You'd have to float that. I've never backed out of something, so it's, I'm feeling weird about to. Dude, tonight. backing out is not a bad thing. If oh, you have to do it, you gotta do it. Yeah. So I don't have any practice, and that's the only thing that's really stopping me right now. Definitely understandable. Take your time. Like you are. Continue visualizing it. Got a no go. Come on, I only do quarries. I do fucking flat glass water. Yeah, yeah. So do I. I mean, you these guys. Yeah. Travis came up and told me that it's a little sketchy down there with all the turbulence in the water. So I decided to pull out.
First time I've ever backed out of anything, but it's all good. Get to live to see another day. So there was a day that I almost got to see one of my best friends die. Me and Nick went out to Emerald Pools, one of our favorite local jumping spots. Early in the season, you know, it was right after that huge winter where there was just an insane amount of precipitation. And we were just super antsy, really wanted to jump. The water was definitely rushing, but it didn't look unmanageable. And so we went out there, just the two of us, which was a pretty questionable decision to only jump with two people. We decided to start off by jumping off the biggest cliff there. We're both definitely a little nervous, but Nick decided that he was gonna take one for the team and jump first. He jumps off the cliff, lands immediately. I knew he was in big trouble. That water just rushed him downstream so quick. It was pulling him so hard. I saw him trying to grab for the rocks on the side and it just ripped the rocks out of his grasp. It was terrifying to watch. You know, he keeps going downstream a little ways and all of a sudden he goes down into a bit of white water and he just disappears. You know, he's floating there, I can see him, and then he's just gone. I was terrified, I was worried I was not gonna find my friend down there. I had just enough energy after pushing off the bottom to grab onto a rock. You know, I finally got to the bottom and I see him just clinging to the rocks on the side. You know, he hadn't even climbed out of the water yet. He was just holding on, trying to catch his breath because he was so winded. If I would have lost one of my friends that day, I would have never gotten over it. It would have been terrible. I think for the both of us, that was just a huge eye-opener, and I know we definitely learned a lot from that, and I don't think we're going to make that same mistake again. Dramatic helicopter rescue saves the life of a Reno man from near death in the Yuba River. The man was swept downriver from Emerald Pools by the fast-moving water on Saturday. Not even a week later, the same situation happens to someone else. But with him, it was a little worse. Okay, I got rocks 
cleared on right and left. I'm at 80 feet, Matt. Okay. Continue would... just at 80 feet. Okay. And I want to I want to crab you in left. Okay. okay so coming... do what you're doing. Okay, I'm coming left. Continue forward and left. Four. Continue forward and left. Three. Continue forward and left. Two. Almost to him. Continue forward and left. One and hold. Okay, he's at the patient. Getting okay. him in. Okay. Getting him in. Okay. He's in. That's in. Okay, third lift. Okay, come on up. Power's good. Bring him up. Okay. Halfway up. Good job, Mon. As of uh, currents and stuff, you really got to watch it. I mean, you got to pay attention to the water levels. There's sometimes when that snow melts so heavy, these things are raging so hard. If you jump in, you're not coming out. So many storms that all our local spots, which are mostly rivers, were just raging. You have to be a good swimmer. If you can't swim well, you shouldn't even cliff jump. I mean, because there's going to be times where you're going to hit the water wrong. going to knock the wind out of you and if you can't keep yourself afloat you know you can't always trust everybody else is going to help you. I think now that we're starting to do it year round it's a whole new factor we're starting to learn and really really try to like be safe about it but know our limits at the same time. We want to keep doing this as long as we can so when we get to a spot you know you got to kind of know when to say no and we said no a lot of times this winter. That is a big fat nope. You know, once again, the current is just so gnarly. It's like a never ending story this spring. All the snow melt is just tormenting us. Every spot we go to, the river just is rushing. It's so gnarly. And so half the time I try to go cliff jumping, I can't even jump because it's just like, for sure you're gonna tie. So it's been a hard spring and uh, it's been hard to get through it, been kind of bummed, but it's almost over. It'll be fat summertime sending this, so we'll get it, we'll get through it. If, in case I were to ever get knocked out, I have this life jacket that keeps me afloat. It adds more buoyancy. My friends can come grab me instead of my body just sinking all the way down to the bottom. I remember last summer, someone wanted to try an 80 foot backflip off a crane, and uh, right before he went up there, I said, hey, take one of our life jackets. So he used one of our life jackets. When he took off, you can tell he was in trouble right away. And when he landed, it knocked him unconscious. And if he didn't have that life jacket, who knows, he probably could have sank all the way down to the bottom. We couldn't have grabbed him in time. We're just really happy he had the life jacket. It's your responsibility if you're going to cliff jump to make sure you are safe when you do it. So depth checking is one of the most important rules. If you don't check the depth, don't jump it. It's just not worth it. Massive, massive waterfall. The waterfall itself at least has to be like, you know, around 100 and there's a, a ledge on either side with perfect takeoffs easily pushing 130, 140, so, you know, just, just kind of like the monsters we're looking for. We were eyeing Rainbow Falls for a couple years. We've seen pictures of it, and the first thing we thought was, oh, can this thing be jumped? What is the limit here, you know? When you're jumping in a 130 foot cliff, how deep does it have to be? Because sometimes we can talk ourselves into some kind of sketchy situations. I swam down below and I got as close as I could. You have to struggle with depth checking is swimming to the falls if you can't get out behind it. Because you know, there's so much water coming in your face, you either have to dive down or you have to like find an entry point on the side. Jeez, that's gnarly looking.
What's the word? It's only like six feet deep. Oh. Fuck. How far out did you get out? Did you get out to the white water? I, mean, I didn't get all the way out to the white water, but maybe like 15 feet out is only six feet deep, so. And I'm down to double check, but it's not looking good. Yeah. No, this this is where we, we're drawing the line here. Like obviously a hundred plus feet in the six feet of water is deadly. Somewhere just in there right now. <laughs> this is like standing in the world's craziest natural watching scene. So yeah, definitely confirmed it's like five feet deep. Dude, you were standing like right there. Sometimes the water levels fluctuate. Something that was safe to jump last year doesn't always mean that it's safe to jump this year. Right underneath the waterfall where the best spot to land is, it's six feet at most, and then it goes up to almost like four feet. Like if you go further to the right, you can probably stand up and have your chest out of the water. So just totally undoable. You gotta play it safe. 10 feet from where the water's hitting, which is like right where the sweet spot is, and you stand up. It's like not even chest deep. Dude, what? These spots always change. Depth checking is a must because you never know what something's gonna be like the next year. Sometimes it's hard to say no. But it's all a part of playing it safe. Be able to jump another day. We just got to Coosa Falls. Um, this place is so cool. Two of my buddies have jumped from the far side of the falls. This year, we have a new plan. We want to send it like right off the middle of the waterfall, possibly on a log. possible takeoff is that log right there. It sticks out just enough that I think we can run off and it puts you directly in the foam at the bottom. So it'd be so perfect. My buddy Jay is depth checking right now and he just tried to depth check right here where you see the white water coming down and immediately got kicked right back to the side. So uh, we're gonna try to take a different route. He's way over on the far side right now and just kind of come into the back of the waterfall where it's a little more calm and see if you can dive down under and then shoot back up in the middle because you can't swim out to the middle because it's raging too hard. As long as it's like 12 to 14 feet deep because it's a 70 footer, it's game on after that. It's hard to swim around in there. You can only get so close to the falls then you have to dive under and try to do the rest underwater. But uh, honestly, it looks, it looks pretty good. It's just like a blue abyss under there as far as like landing in the middle of the waterfall, so. What do you think? I, I know what that face means. It's on. Game time. This is a 
the scariest fucking thing I've ever fucking done. What the fuck am I doing? I'm standing on a log in the middle of the fucking waterfall. It's dangling over. What am I fucking doing? Man, this is gonna be the greatest thing I've ever done. All right, who's ready for this shit? Who's ready for this shit? When we first got there, I noticed Briggsy, he looked at the cliff and then he looked at me and he said, this is not happening. There's no way. So Kusa Falls, probably the scariest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Standing on that little log and balancing it, which by the way, I almost fell off. I remember going out there and just standing on it and I'm looking, I got my foot like right on the edge of the log. I was like, okay, maybe this thing's possible. I got mad vertigo and it was really, really hard to balance. Brandon Beck, man. Of course he decides to go first off the log. log right away and, and I knew this is not gonna happen. The only thing I like to do that high is stand backward. There's no way I'm standing backwards on that log. That file is huge. Time just felt like it was going into slow motion. I kind of forgot I was even falling down, just hanging upside down, staring at the water. Myself and just sent probably one of my favorite gamers of all time. Five, four, three, two, Life's so good, dude. This is amazing. The fact that you're in the middle of a waterfall on a diving board vlog was really sketchy and fucked up, honestly. Everybody pushing everybody. I mean, it, whether it's someone just straight jumping, the fact that they've never done something that high, they're just encouraging it. Like, and that's, that's the best part about this sport. It's never a competitive thing. It's always, you know, someone tells you they want to try something new, you're just like, you got it, dude. I mean, sometimes you got to talk to people about it before you just think in your head you're going to huck something because talking it over with someone that's maybe done this trick before can really help you.
for me, it was a must to wear the wetsuit at Blue Pool High School. Everybody has their signature trick that they do all the time and it kind of gets standard. But then you start seeing our friends progress, trying new tricks. Nick has been working at Woodward and on diving boards and he's been trying really hard to perfect a double front half, which is two front flips and a half twist. Like a lot of people in our group can do double front halves, but it was really special to Nick because he's never tried it before. So because it's special to him, it's gonna be special to us. And there's like 60 people there and everybody gets really quiet. Absolutely stomped it. It was amazing. Everybody was super stoked. The stoke level was super high. When you come down to Abiquia, you come around this corner and then it just reveals itself. If you see this, these beautiful walls of big volcanic basalt columns. Where would you find me when I'm not cliff jumping? Hot springs. You know, we're not jumping off cliffs, we're just exploring hot springs.
two new in nubs. Oh, man. You are going to get buried to the nose. Bobby's going to be entombed in mud. I've been to a lot of hot springs before, but Nevada by far has some of the most amazing, unique hot springs that I've ever seen. Here we are at Nevada. Water temperature, uh, about 101. Delightful. Whew. Hot springs are one of those things that uh, is a magical curative property about them, you know. Native Americans have soaked in these things for thousands of years. It's one of the you know traditional ceremonies, and uh, we're just following that tradition, healing our bodies. It's definitely rejuvenative, and uh, can't get enough of them. So before I became really good friends with everyone in this group, uh, they started reaching out to me on Instagram and I specifically remember two years ago, I was going to school in Chico and um, I get this text from a guy who I hadn't really met in person yet. He's like, hey man, I heard you grew up around Bernie. Uh, we're gonna go send Bernie Falls. A few years ago, 130 feet was out of the question. It was like, dude, no way. Nobody would ever throw 130 feet. I just remember reading that text message. I was like, no, you're not. Who are these guys? They're just, you know, they're full of it. That's undoable. I saw photos of it and I'm like, there's no way it's 130 feet. And then you see it on video and you're like, all right, the thing could be 130 feet. And then you show up in person, you're sitting there at the bottom of it, near the swimming hole, and you're like, 100% this thing's 130 feet. on YouTube, the courts actually sent him a letter to his house, I don't know who sends letters anymore, to his house with a postage stamp.
I'm gonna pay. Chase. Those other kids are like, you're a general addiction, are you gonna jump this? I'm like, no, shh. Oh. Don't say anything. He's not gonna jump. Yeah, so I just swam out to depth check it again, and it is freezing, but I was able to make it out there against the current, and it's like, it's beautiful. It's super clear, super blue, and it's at least 15 to 20 feet deep, so I think if he jumps, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a fat gap. Even when I threw the rock at it, it barely cleared out over the ledge. So, yeah, you'd have to push pretty hard to clear it. Add that with a 130 foot jump, and they're asking for one of the gnarliest cliff jumps ever. So, ah, it's like one of the most gnarly things I've ever stood on. I want to do it someday, but today's not the day. Around these spots as a kid, you see it, you're just like, all right, that's death, you know? Props to you for jumping it, man. That was. If I could get that confidence, I think I would throw a gainer off Bernie Falls. A lot of media in general portray cliff jumping in a very negative light. Videos of cliff jumping, which left more than two dozen people dead last year in the United States. Lisa Guerrero has a look at its appeal and its dangers. Inside Edition specifically made a video that contained a lot of my videos and a lot of Nick Coulter's videos. It's a dangerous craze. <laughs> Daredevils taking death-defying plunges off sky-high cliffs. The cliff jumping is dangerous. It is. I mean, look at it. You're jumping off a cliff into water. If you don't know how deep it is, then you're, I mean, you're retarded. You're probably going to hit rocks. So that's dangerous. I mean, almost everything about it's dangerous. If your body's not in perfect shape, you know, you flop off a 10 foot, you could break your back. Just checking the depth is the most important part. If you don't check the depth, don't jump it. It's just not worth it. You don't know what's under that water. Even if you jump the place a million times, there could be a log that's under there now. Watching jumps like these hits close to home for Charlie. He nearly lost his life in 2009 after leaping off this bridge near Yosemite, California, while on vacation with his family. This picture was taken the moment before he crashed into the water. Almost paralyzed, Charlie had to learn to walk again. Look at Charlie's walking. People think that they can just come up and jump off of it and it'll be all right and they don't realize we've had years and years of training body conditioning practice we have our form on point i wish i could stay up there on that ledge and tell people my story and not to jump all it takes is one wrong landing and bam you're in the hospital you're paralyzed or worse you wind up dead yeah it's it's really dangerous especially if you don't know what you're doing but if you do know what you're doing and you train for it and you have conditioning and and you, you check depths, and you take that extra step of safety, and you've taken the baby steps to build yourself up to jump off something so big and gnarly as we do, then it's actually quite safe. It's when people are inexperienced and don't take these precautions that accidents happen and deaths happen. That's really a long way down. And if you need a little fortification, there's also this. Lots of liquid courage. Oh, dear, dear. This guy guzzled down beers before taking the plunge. Yeah, you have these drunk people that just go out there and they hurt themselves, and those are the stories you hear about. You don't hear about the stories like us that are doing it the right way. I don't go out to the to the cliffs and get really drunk and then try stuff that's out of my reach. I think I'm too stupid to realize that it's dangerous, so I'm gonna do it right now. <laughs> At this quarry in Wisconsin, 19 people have died since 1979. Yes, 19. If people are going to sit here and tell me that this is too dangerous and no one should do it, it's just, it just seems silly to me. You can approach us safely and some of the comments I see are just ridiculous. Like, people literally will say like, oh, I don't care if these idiots like crack their head on a rock. It's dangerous. 
either hit another person, hit a rock, hit their head, possibly paralyzed, or worse. And it's illegal. Take a look at these guys behind me here. All this cliff diving here at Sunset Cliffs, that's illegal in the city of San Diego. This is an amazing sport. And there, in any sport or in any activity or in any hobby that you do, there are people in that group of people who put a bad name out for everyone else. Actually a misdemeanor to jump off those cliffs at Sunset, uh, Sunset Cliffs and fine start at $100. Uh, parents are actually held responsible if anyone under 18 is caught jumping. To everybody out there who doesn't really know what we're doing, I want to say it is dangerous. But if you take the appropriate steps, we check everything and you know that's something that the news doesn't pick up. Cliff jumping itself is very safe if you take the proper precautions which we do. Depth checking the water, making sure there's no debris, making sure it's deep enough. Also having you know a safety crew in the water or close by so if someone flops we can go in and retrieve them as fast as possible and keep everybody safe. Uh, I've taken a couple good flops. It definitely does not feel good at all. I mean, I've taken a couple face flops, back flops. If you're not flopping sometimes, you're not trying hard enough. Have I ever flopped? Yeah, a lot. Fuck! Slower. Yeah. Pop up and slow. Take a deep breath. Cool.
That might have hurt a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's kind of tradition for the whole group to go to Oregon every year because it's one of the most beautiful spots in the country, in my opinion. Waterfalls everywhere. And uh, so this year, I reached out to Nick and a few of the other guys asking, where does everybody want to go? Where do you want to jump at? What waterfalls? What cliffs? And pretty much everybody said Metlaco Falls. I'm going to send something. I'm in the sending mood right now. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta come down this whole canyon. There's no trail. We don't really know where we're going. We don't know if it actually goes through. This is all just new territory for us. I looked at pictures online and immediately I was like, no, that's not possible. Because it's just a super downslope takeoff and it looked like you wouldn't be able to stand on that. So I was like, hey, we'll, we'll go, we'll check it out, but I don't think it's gonna be jumpable. Before you get to the waterfall, you have to traverse on some steep rocks. I know that leads to something. We're getting close. And then it just opens up to the one of the most beautiful swimming holes I've ever seen. We pretty much thought of everything except for how to get out. So right now, we're flying a drone around the area to see if there's another way out. Uh, as of right now, it's not looking good, but uh, we'll see. But well, we still gotta send it anyway. <laughs> oh yeah. Sloping down. Yeah. Sketchy ass. The first send is just gonna be me slipping off of it. That's what I almost said. Once we jump down, we don't know how to get out. <laughs> so, we're gonna fly the drone, we're gonna do some scouting missions, see if we can climb up some stuff, and hopefully, hopefully we can actually escape this canyon alive. You good? Oh man. There's snow going up there. <laughs> Is it oh. climbable? No. So, if we jump in, we cannot climb up the stream. And we'd For have at to least swim like a half mile yeah, or a mile. We'd need to swim at least a mile. <laughs> so, since we don't have a solid plan of escape out of this canyon, and if something actually happened to somebody, uh, we couldn't get them out. It uh, doesn't look like we're going to be jumping today, but we're definitely going to come back with a better plan, better system. Now we've explored it, so we know what to expect, and this is definitely a sick spot, so. We will be back. Just a half mile upstream from Metlaco Falls lies Punchbowl Falls. I'm facing back to front Over my shoulder at the sun And it's an open door And I've my of sight and smoke
We just decided we had to come back to Metlaka and we gotta do this up right. So it's way bigger than we originally thought <laughs> and the takeoff is all down slopes. Super mm -hmm. slippery. Yeah, slippery. It's it's not a ideal takeoff and it's making me terrified to try a brand new trick off of it. One because it's huge and two because the takeoff is not good. It's a big jump. Weird takeoff and unknown exit. We all jumped it, we all sent it pretty heavy, stomped our tricks. Punch Bowl in Metlaka Falls is pretty much the epitome of why I love Oregon. Just absolutely beautiful. And it was, it's gonna be a day I remember for the rest of my life, for sure. So the Pacific Northwest is one of the greatest places for us. I fly up there every couple months just so we can go hit stuff. And it's worth every penny of flight money, gas money, you know, paying my friends to pick me up from the airport. And we just go and we just hit the most epic swimming holes because Oregon and Washington is just full of them.
the best part is we're not even done. We got so many more places to go explore, so many more plans up there that we have in the works. When we gathered the craziest cliff jumpers all around the world and went to McLeod, some insane stuff happened. Robert Wall, Reinhard Reed, Nick Coulter, Alex Shirley, Brandon Beck, Scott Pullman, Jay Briggs, and myself. I'm Chase Reinhard, by the way. <laughs> The best freestyle cliff jumpers out here. You know, Nick Coulter's double back state was so sick. Brandon Beck's triple misty. Like, oh my gosh. These guys are amazing, they're killing it. Alex is contemplating the triple. He's been wanting this for months. I was so nervous. I had actual butterflies. I was kind of freaking out inside, but I didn't I didn't want to admit it. I really, really wanted this trick. I've been thinking about it for so long. And you know, with all the practice I've been doing at Woodward, it's probably gonna work out. Reinhard Reed, 100% the most gnarly freestyle cliff jumper that the community has. He's from Germany. He throws the most gnarliest tricks. On another human level. So many variations of triples went down, and I think like seven different people did triples off of this 75 foot waterfall. And that's unheard of. Just, just. Just doing a triple in general is so impressive kind of thing that when everybody started tripling, it was just like, what is happening right now? No one would even believe a double backflip off of McLeod. And then now, people are doing quads? Nobody in our group has ever thrown a quad before. And he over-rotates it and was like, yeah, dude, what's the big deal? Like, come on. Whoa, like, this is what cliff jumping has become? I don't want to do this anymore. This is too crazy, too dangerous. Everyone's throwing down, pushing each other to go bigger. That day at McLeod was just insane. I've never been around that many top level cliff jumpers at once. And just seeing everybody go off to send the biggest flips off a huge cliff, it just blew my mind. And I'm, I'm still to this day trying to kind of process it. Brad was a huge, huge inspiration for me, um, and he was also one of my really, really good friends. 
um, in Arizona. When I moved out there a year ago, one of my favorite people to hang out with there because he was outside every day, every other day, every weekend, exploring new spots, cliff jumping anywhere and everywhere. Even if he got off at 4 p.m., he was, he was always down to go drive two hours out to Canyon Lake, send the bridge and come back before, you know, before dark. Brad was an inspiration for everybody. He was the first person to ever jump Havasu Falls, and he jumped it from the sketchiest spot that you could jump it from. Once he did that, it, it completely changed the game. Like, everyone looked at our entire Havasu Fi trip in a whole new light. Brad, at least for me personally, started an obsession. I mean, we watched a YouTube video of this guy hucking himself off Havasu Falls, which at the time there was literally not another video of that anywhere. So for all intents and purposes, he was the first one to do it. I think it started this whole conquest of, you know, conquering new waterfalls that have never been jumped before. We organized a trip back to have a supai in memorial for Brad. When I got there, I knew that I really wanted to do something big for Brad because I knew he was up there watching us. It was truly like Brad had his arms around all of us. We could all feel it. We were all calm. I don't know what it was, but I've never felt more comfortable in my life. I just felt extremely, extremely confident. I looked down at the water and I was like, Yep, I got this. I got his name chanting right before I jumped. And I think, I think Brad was with me there, and definitely the coolest experience of my life. water clean. It was the most energizing feeling. I'm getting goosebumps all over just thinking about it. Losing somebody like Brad is, it's never going to be the same without him, but we still send it for him. You know, we go to places that he was in love with and we send it for Brad. Brad just went for it and that was what I loved most about him is, you know, even if other people were like, oh, maybe, maybe not, Brad, Brad knew what he wanted and he knew exactly how to get it. And I, know you, I know you were looking down on us, Brad. I know you were keeping us all safe that day. And I just gotta say, I miss you. Go on, get it, baby. Witnessing some of the other people at Havasu Pie was so gnarly. Nick Coulter, when he backflipped it. Ooh! Oh no. And his head ended up being inside the waterfall halfway down, you could see it. He was completely blind. That was one of the scariest moments of my life. I had no idea where I was. So I just sprawled out both arms and my legs were really loose. And when I hit, it just shot my knees out. Blew out both of his MCL. He wasn't ready to brace for impact. I couldn't walk the rest of the trip. It was terrible. 
I couldn't even believe how good his senses were. He came around to his feet great. I thought that he was going to be all good and perfect, but I mean, I guess he couldn't see, obviously. His head was in a waterfall. It happens. You could tell all he wanted to do was just go jump these amazing waterfalls, and he was in so much pain. He was just like sitting on the ground, you know, nothing he could do because his knees were so mangled. Like, I just, my heart went out to him, man. I was like, that sucks, especially because he pretty much stomped the jump. If it didn't hurt, it wouldn't be fun. I mean, it's the risk that really that drives you. Until this day, I still feel really bad MCL pain, so what I've been doing is I've been training, 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 so I can get back to where I was. When I'm in the gym, I like to you know, work on back workouts a lot, ab workouts, because those are really what can help you withstand impacts and help you stay nimble through the air. I know that I can't go out and continue to take these impacts and make the hikes and climbs required to do these jumps if I'm not in good shape. I tried to talk him through it a little bit. This is the same jump as Havasu. This is exactly like Havasu, dude. You'll get it, I swear. Same exact pop, same exact jump, everything, dude. You'll land, you'll be good. You just gotta trust that once your body's in the air, you'll know what to do. You just have to just enter that flow state and you just have to not think and you just have to jump. Looking at this waterfall, like, we have to jump this. There's got to be a way. Nick and Brandon were the first ones to put a plan in action to be like, okay, this is what we're doing. We're going to go here. We're going to scope it out, depth check. Yeah, with those fins, dude, I couldn't get down there without the fins. Brandon will be able to get down there. Nobody's ever jumped it, and there's reasons people have never jumped it. On the left hand side of the white water, there's a big boulder. We depth checked, and right where you want to jump, there's a big boulder that's about three feet under the water. If you hit it, you're going to die. You know, what I saw, I didn't like. I seen a giant boulder right next to where you need to land. To the right, there's like a rock that will fuck you up if you hit it. I think it's doable. As I stood over the edge, I knew that nobody else had ever jumped. I wondered if I was crazy because some of my boldest friends said no. But I knew I had it, I could feel it in my heart. And I went from being scared to fearless as I dove off the edge.
standing up there and my buddy was up there, you know, with me and I'm like contemplating, I'm going over my steps and I look at him, I was like, you know what, dude, I don't, I don't know if I can do this. And he goes, you know what, dude, Briggsy would do it. And I'm like, you know what, dude, Briggsy would do it. I was like, give me five. I'm gonna throw one of those rocks for you to show you where like the money spot is. I'll throw it. It's so soft, dude. Right in that white water. Money. With Nick's backflips, I mean, when he when he jumps, he doesn't have a lot of pop to it, so he, he stays decently close to the edge, so he doesn't get out super far. He's not 10, 12, 13 feet out away from the cliff by the time he lands. So that's what was really kind of scaring me about uh, Nick's backflip, because you do have to get out at least 10, 12 feet. It's important to know when to back down from a jump. If you're not feeling it, your body's not ready, you're not mentally there, take your time, do it another day. Jolly Boy's Mine up in the Tahoe National Forest. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful setting. It's got an 80 foot crane that just hangs a, a, as a perch above the water. What's up Jay, what are you thinking about? <laughs> thinking about doing a gainer. I'd be fucking nervous too. I've gone there, you know, five, six, seven times and I've just seen so many people jump it, all my friends, you know, throw gnarly flips off of it and I just can't get myself to do it. I have, every time I stand up there, I put my feet on that ledge and I just look down and I just, I, I can't do it. body just says don't do this and I can't visualize it and if I can't visualize it and my body says don't do it it's good to know when to back down and I've backed down from this thing four times I've jumped higher jumps I've jumped 100 feet and this thing's only 80 feet but just something about this one I just can't get myself to do it's a lot more valuable to back down from a jump you're not comfortable with something you can't visualize for yourself than to just force yourself into it just because there's people there just because you know it's not worth it It's important to know when to back down. I, you know, when I saw him up there, I, I could tell he was really nervous. Uh, just as much as I was.
flow state is your brain keeping you alive. It's hard just to get in that state of mind, but it's, once you go, you gotta act upon it. You can't second guess it. You know, there's the noise of the waterfall. There's your heart beating, boom, 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 boom. And then you jump and it turns silent. If you're not focused and 100% in the zone, ready to go, you're gonna get hurt. Sometimes what happens to people is they let these negative thoughts in and they're like, oh, what if this, what if this? Oh, I don't know about this. And then the more negative thoughts you have, the more your brain convinces itself that, oh, maybe this isn't such a good idea. But when you go into things with a mindset of like, this is doable, I can do this, you know, you're gonna have a lot better chance of being able to do it. Everybody's confidence is so high and I'm just like, I'm <laughs> scared this for everything. This waterfall has been invading my dreams for almost a year now. I need, a, I need like, I need a good solid, I need to see at least two or three people jump and I need a good solid period of just staring at the platform. I, just, I gotta just get through my head that it's worth it. Single foot, pump this guy, lean back. I just, yeah, wanna, I just wanna get some sleep. This is like Subai was last year. Yeah. Alright, so how's the flow up? What's it looking like? Uh, the flow is about two thirds of what it was last time, which is good and bad. It's, uh, it provides for a better takeoff. It's a lot less slick, a lot less water and mist up there, but the white water is um, a lot smaller, so it's a lot smaller of a landing area, um, and it's a lot rougher in impact. So we definitely need to go down there and depth check, check out the underwater hazards, and see what we can do. We were all kind of nervous. We were expecting the flow to be outrageous and just raging, and the same conditions as Nick had before. But luckily, we got there to find that the waterfall had slowed down a little bit. The flow was not so bad. It's gonna be it looks smaller than it was last time. Oh uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> the flow is less. I'd imagine it's, like it's shallower. I know it just doesn't look as high. It's fun. Maybe it's just less not intense. It's, it's not it's as really intimidating as last price. time. But it's still it's still something to take seriously. One small error off something that high and it could break you. Five, four, three, two. Well, so first I thought about the Sugihara. Uh -oh. 
but now with this extra height, I'm thinking just add a front flip to the Sukahara. So double half, back out. The first group of jumpers jumped. We were feeling good. Nick headed up and you know he had a, he had a lot to think about up there, doing just a straight backflip with such a huge gap. To the right, there's like a rock that will fuck you up. If I can get that first front flip done within 10 to 15 feet, maybe less, just lay out that Barani so I can really spot, and then if I have time, I can lay it out. Ever since Havasu, I've been terrified of gaps. Oh no! Blew out both of his MCLs. It's a pretty big gap. I hate gaps. Uh, I don't know if he could clear that gap. the most scariest part in that sending. It's kind of just that pinnacle crown cliff jumping spot that you know we all just conquered. And once we jumped that it was the greatest feeling ever. Oh man, I just swam over to them as fast as I can, just group hugs all around in the water. It was, man, it was one of the happiest moments of my life. I can't even, I can't even like, control how I'm figuring out. I can fucking cry. This is crazy. This dude. Oh yeah! Fucking monster. Damn! Where are we gonna stop? Where is this gonna end for us? We don't know of everything out there. There are so many places that a lot of people have never seen before. We just want to get out there and explore the most remote, the most amazing, the most beautiful waterfalls out there. That's what this Abaqua trip was really about. Abaca or Abaca? Abaca, that sounds better, huh? Hey, Squirrely, can you tell your cousin to shut up behind you? All my squirrel fam is trying to ruin my interview here.
I've been jumping off cliffs for over a decade. Throwback footage. Dot dot dot. <laughs> but it wasn't until these past few. Yeah, when I found out that Travis double half the 130 footer, I was like. Do a mic check, say balls a few times. Balls, balls, balls. Uh, mic check, balls, balls. One, two, balls. Adrenaline. Adrenaline. Uh, adrenaline. That was good. First one. <laughs> adrenaline. <laughs> adrenaline addiction. Okay. I've had a tequila sponsorship actually before. Really? Yeah, it was the most dangerous sponsor I've ever had in my whole life. That was, <laughs> I'm never doing that again. Only healthy sponsors from here on out. Yeah, like vitamins and almond butter and shit. Yeah. Was there ever a time you had to back down from the jump? First time we went to Abiqua, Nick, oh fuck, I gotta say Abiqua, because that's the name of it. <laughs> do, it, do it in like different pitches, or just like keep just saying it? Abiqua Falls. Maybe say it longer. Oh, okay. Abiqua Falls. That was like weird though. That was like a pause. <laughs> that was on the hunt for new hot springs. Say that again. <laughs> God. <laughs> Great thing about hot springs, you just get a... <laughs> let it all out. Um, so the first time he went to Abiqua, he didn't make it. Uh, okay, that sounded dumb. No, <laughs> he didn't no, make it. <laughs> I'm talking about organ. Enormous basalt amphitheater adorned. I actually, that's kind of too fancy. This makes me sound so smart. It's these beautiful walls of volcanic basalt. Fuck, what was it? Yeah, I forget too. Dude, this is gonna be so good when it's like overlaid. So good, so fun. Overlaid with music is ah! The heights we're pushing it to. Oh fuck, wait. Yeah, okay. The heights we are pushing. Get my model. How'd you come up with all this, dude? This is good. <laughs> <laughs> we're just like laying in bed when I like. At work, just... in the van. Oh! Oh, yeah, hold hands? hands? Oh, I can definitely pee my pants, should I? Right now? Okay, I'm peeing. Oh, I see. Oh, some simultaneous pee. Hmm. <sighs> No, usually. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> 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 <laughs>